Um, fabulous. So, um, as I say, it's going to be quite a nice little session. Um, last week, I think, was a little bit of a long session. So, um, I'm going to, again, I've taken the liberty of doing my line. Um, you guys, I know, I know I've worked with a few of you guys. Uh, how many is on? I've worked with a few people um, on the call so far. Your line works pretty smashing. Um, I know my tailor, the guys from Taylor Taylor as well, I know your line works going to be pretty good. So I'm not going to waste time, um, as I said last week, bulleting you guys to say, oh, this is how you do your line. Your line work will be fine. Okay. It's more internally and just working around shape work and, and manipulation of hair, which I think is quite, um, or we've seen from last week's session, we've got quite some quite good questions coming in after the, after the call. So I think a lot of people got a little bit um, started to understand this a little bit, which is really good. And as I say, every single time I do a video, I'm going to be referring back to these because they are your fundamentals in cutting. So your fundamentals with the LHA are your, your signature cuts. So your, um, your uh, long graduation and your uniform layers and things like that. But they're not going to be... Um, they're not going to be suitable for every single guest that you do in salon. Okay, there's going to be some salons that have some really thick hair or some guests that have thick hair, some guests that have fine hair. So you've got to work with this a lot more. And also when you're working with shaping, how do they want their hair to sit? How do they want it to fall? Can you do something technically to it to make it do something you're after? And that's where your shape work and your over direction comes in. Okay, so elevation and over direction are absolutely crucial. Um, the shake today is, is probably one of my favorite cuts to do in terms of um, long ladies' hair. Um, most of my guests in salon, I work different elevations and different techniques towards the shape, but it's a similar sort of process. It's a really beautiful way of cutting, and it's fast, which is really good. I know last week we were looking to control areas, so control areas behind the ear, if we remember, where we were working our square shape around the back to basically control that length behind the ears and then work triangularly to push some weight forwards to give sustenance and strength to my overall front hairline. Um, when I started to put the round graduation or the forward graduation into the front area, it had that stability from the triangular tool that we were working with. Okay, the difficulty or the difference with the shake is you control the same areas, you just work it slightly differently. And I'll explain how that works. It's all again done with over direction. So you're pulling hair, as I said last week, this is the main area that we want to focus on and the main area that we really want to keep um, the strength to, being that we lose as much hair as we do from the nape and then run that shape into this top area here, up behind the ears. It's so crucial to leave strength down here. So where we over-directed hair away from there last week to basically push hair in, we're going to do the exact same, but we're pulling it into here. Make sense? So we're pushing... Instead of pulling the hair here, we're taking more weight off this front piece so that it all dresses back beautifully and still has that control from your line. Because ultimately as well, you'll have wasted a lot of time. If you're putting your line in, in salon, and then you're just gonna come through and layer it all down, you've wasted say 10 minutes, 15 minutes of a 40, 45 minute up to an hour appointment time for a haircut. So it's crucial that you keep yourself um, on point, on flow, um, keep your timings an absolute, um, an absolute must in salon. All right? So let's get going. I'm not going to waste too much more time um, of your day. I am going to lift her up so we can see, and hopefully you'll be able to see um, what I am doing. So I'm going to start, actually, with my head sheet in here. And there's the light is shining right there. So basically, I'm going to be working my sections diagonally from front to back and we're going to go those three sections first of all hopefully you can see that i think it might be a little bit too far away over in a bit and each section is going to be over directed back to the previous and my first section will be my forward graduation as we did last week okay so I want that shape to fall Nice and long. Can you see that? I can see that. If you can't, I'll just tip it. Oops. <laughs> so, if we start our work. So I've got a central parting again. I do all my demos from a center parting until we get the hair a little bit shorter or we start to do like side fringe work and um, a little bit more movement around the face or areas that we want to control differently in there. 
Um, if you're working with a central pie, it's a nice way to show balance and nice way to show how to control balance, which is absolutely crucial, okay? So my first section's very fine in the front. And we're gonna start with our section of forward graduation, okay? So the shake ultimately is a round layer, okay? So we're gonna be working everything from back to front and pushing weight back and pushing length back. So we're getting shorter in the front and gradually longer into the back and lighter and gradually heavier to the back. So everything rounded here, where the hair is shorter in the front and goes longer into the back area, okay? That's the crucial key. We're looking at this being the, um, I say the, uh, the Taui cut, the Essex girl haircut. Um, every person around my area uh, all likes the hair back off their face. So if we can do something technically to create that, perfect. Gives them an easier blow dry, okay? So starting with our forward graduation again. Last week we kept it quite long. This week I'm gonna come quite high. So I wanna come right up to her chin length here. It's gonna give us a nice little flick in the front and a little bit of something to push the hair away and a bit more substance, okay? So we push her head back, and again, take a section of hair, the width of her nose, to create my guideline. And make sure that hair is all neat and tidy. And we'll pull down, and starting our elevation again at around five, five degrees-ish. As I said, I don't really like talking about degrees, but um, around about there, okay? And take that away. Now again, as we said last week, there was a question in, in afterwards in one of the groups that could you not do the, the twisty thing where you see online, people twist it. If you find that works, then perfect. Go for what you feel comfortable with and go with what you feel works because being comfortable in hair is the most crucial thing. As we've been saying over the last couple of weeks is that um, a lot of you also have come in with, with some really nice um, suggestions about doing hair to me, which I'm thinking, wow, well, I might try that because it feels comfortable. And your body is the most important thing. If you, if you get to my age, um, I'm 30 and just turned. And um, if I, I started when I was 16. So if I was, if I was bending down and making sure my body was really um, sort of contorted around the guest, you're going to have so much pain in here, so much pain in your back and you've got a long career on your feet. So really do look after yourselves. That's why the chair spins and goes up so high, so that you can keep yourself comfortable the whole time, okay? So now we're gonna pull everything forwards. And again, as we were saying, we've come a little bit higher. So where last week we were using the point of her chin as my guideline, I'm now gonna use the corner of her lip areas. So we go from the left-hand side, we're gonna aim for the corner of the right-hand side of the lip, uh, this side. <laughs> and um, for the opposite side, go for the opposite side corner of the lip. Okay, and that way is going to keep our balance because we know our mannequins are, um, are symmetrical. Okay, so nice tension on the hair. And I'm going to angle my knuckles into the corner of her lip line, which automatically posts, posts my fingers down to point to the floor. Okay, and that creates that nice graduation feel, but also make sure that we don't cut off any corner down here around the, part, around the, um, the side burny area that we really wanna keep that strength because we just put that line in, into the front area, okay? And again, thumbs down and take away that length. And similarly into this left hand or the right hand side, fingertips face up to the corner of the guest slip and my knuckles instantly come down. If you're left-handed, you're obviously gonna be different. So you're, you're gonna be opposite to the way that I'm working, okay? But primarily speaking, it's the same technique. You've just got to switch hands, all right? So down again on this last piece. Um, corner of my, my fingertips are facing the, the corner of the opposite side of the lip and my knuckles instantly face down to the ground. And we take that away. And then just to check balance, find out where we're going. Perfect, okay? So that's our guideline in. And if we look at how that's sitting and always assess where that length is sitting first of all. So if I pick her up a little bit, we've got a nice bit of softness just falling around about the bottom of the jawline, which is great. And then that just opens up that little face area. But because we're pulling that away from where, we're, where it's naturally falling already, we're already creating that weight down here. 
So if I were to just pull everything down here and not angle my fingers enough as we're coming in the front, we're gonna to start to cut away some of this overall line in here. If I move out the way, you see it better. That corner is what we were looking to keep. So by pulling that forwards, we're framing the face rather than coming into this shape here, okay? Really crucial that you keep that length. So however you find an easy way to work this shape or work this technique, if you can ensure that you're keeping your corner down on the bottom, you will never go wrong, okay? So let's move on. So our first section is in. If I go back to my, um, my head sheet now, that's the wrong color. So our second section is now where we're gonna influence our elevation, okay? So as we know, elevation creates our weight, okay? So we're gonna be wanting to get lighter and lighter as we come up the head. So if we look more at our elevation chart, she's facing the wrong way, really. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just twist her around because it's not gonna make any sense at all <laughs> with the way I've had her facing. So if she comes in this way, or he, we don't discriminate. Um, so, first section was uh, in here and our elevation came down into about here. Okay, if you can see that. My second section is now gonna elevate just a tad higher and that's gonna come just below my 90 degrees. Okay just below my 90 degrees. So I'm getting lighter, but I'm still graduating the hair, okay? I go back about two, possibly three sections on my shakes, just so that if somebody's got very thick hair, you don't get a heavy weight buildup or a heavy weight removal straight away from the haircut, okay? You, you, you have a, a, a gradual blend of lightness. If your sections are really thick as well, you'll find that it gets too light too quickly. So then you'll create a corner in the hair, which we really don't want to create. And if we're down here, my second section is gonna come into there. Okay? So we're elevating slightly higher, but still below that 90 degree angle. So we're still creating graduation. So second piece. And we take our little central section again, higher elevation, and you'll pick up your guideline in there, I don't know if you can see the guide. Pick up the guide in there. And now all we do for the rest of the cut is to stand in front, okay? So we're gonna lift, same elevation. And because we're over directing the hair away from where we want it to go, or away from where it naturally wants to fall, we're starting to control that line. We're starting to control the, the severity and the weight of that outline, okay? So, Absolutely crucial that we do that. As we say, because we want to keep that level in the line and keep that stability and strength in the line. So next section, ooh, next section elevates slightly higher and start to control that shape. Okay, and each section just in this front piece, analyze where it's sitting and, and assess where it wants to fall because once you get halfway over the back of the top of the head and into the crown area, if you find it's too heavy in there, you've got to start all over again. But here, you've just got to do two little sections again, haven't you? So if we have a little look where that sits, I'm quite happy with the way that's sitting. And already you can see, I, I've combed it into place, but you can already see it just naturally wants to sit back and give her a bit of a shake up. It naturally wants to sit and hug around her little cheekbone area, which is a fantastic little length for, for these mannequins. They're really, really strong um, bone structures they've created here, which is great. So, as I said last week, if you're doing a shake, influence the, the guest's face shape. Make her know where you're putting the line and give a reason for putting it there. And honestly, you, you'll find that it's a, it's, a, it's a cracking way to build your clientele. Okay, so I'm going to lower her down just a tad and take another fine section. And this time we're starting to flow our shape around into the back piece. Okay, so when we flow this into here, we're gonna end up with a big circle around the back, which I'll show you once we go a few more sections in. So again, next section is in there, okay? So we're getting front to back, shorter to longer in the front, longer, uh, weightier in the back. And because we're directing our hair with our sections, 
it's we know that that shape is going to be pushing off the face. If our section was down here somewhere, just be a little bit of a heavier, a heavier technique. Okay, the lower your the lower your diagonal line, the heavier the hair is going to be. Okay, so now our third section is she in the way of that? Oh, she's not lovely. Our third section we're going to lift just above that ninety degrees. Okay, so you get the idea where we're going with this. Yeah, so each section we're lifting slightly higher and just working that shape round into the shape. So next section, we're elevating high above that 90, or a little bit above that 90 degree angle. We're gonna pick up our guideline and take that away. And then still stand in the same place, okay? If you were to stick your, feet, stick your feet to the floor, you'd be able to do this haircut, other than the line. You can't really do a line with your feet stuck to the floor. But, um, we can work our shape around by just standing in one place. So it's similar to the graduated bob. If anyone's seen my graduated bob DVD, bob DVD, <laughs> that's, that's wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, if anyone's seen my graduated bob video on my YouTube page, I'm standing in the back the whole time. Yeah, because that's a triangular shape. So we're forming the shape in the back. All I'm doing is pivoting, pivoting, and pulling everything back to there. The same with a shape, it's exactly the same. We're standing here, we're pivoting, pivoting, we're pulling everything to here, yeah? It's such a simple way to cut hair, but it's so effective. So, so effective when you're working with guests in salon. It's very, very quick, very, very easy to do. It's gonna take me a bit of time because I talk a lot. <laughs> you'll, you'll know that by now. But ultimately, if you're in salon and you're just chatting away to your guest, and she's chatting back to you or he's chatting back to you, um, you can get this done in 45 minutes. Really beautiful blow dry. And the effects of working with shape and effective elevation with your haircuts is your blow dries will be 10 times easier because where you want the hair to sit, you're cutting it in a way to make the hair sit into place. So just easier blow dries, easier the whole way around. Okay, so now, again, we're starting to reach the brow of the head, the highest point of the head. So. Here's where our elevation will start to raise a little bit higher each time. So if I spin that round, you'll see where the sections are going, actually. So next section round into the back, okay? So we're starting to create a little bit of a circle back here, if you can see. His legs are getting in the way. See what I mean? So it's starting to get that little circle around the top. And as soon, that starts to slim down and there's just the weight pushing back into that. So as soon as you run out of your circle, you know the weight and all the corners are gone. Okay. So again, we're going to stand into the front. And my next section is going to come up a lot higher than that 90. So we're now going to come into here. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Quite simple, isn't it? And then as we go back through the head, Everything now is going to come round into here. We're going to run out of our little circle and everything is going to push up and push round and push round into the back. And then it creates no corners or weightless layering feel that all wants to push back off the head. Very, very simple technique. But not many people try it because it is a little bit daunting when you get behind the ears. And I'll explain why. And I'll give you a nice little way of getting around that shape. So, Elevation again, a little bit higher. Pick up your guideline and take that away. And then we elevate again into these side pieces. Pick up your guide. And now my line is down here. We know my line's down here, yeah. But if we don't go down further, we're gonna create that corner like we were explaining last week. So we lower our shape down, still keeping a nice elevation, but creating that slight rounder feel on the head. So everything's coming round the shape here, okay? So even though you're starting to flatten your shape down, your elevation is still coming out quite nice and high from the head shape, okay? And again, tuck that in. Now I'm gonna to want to do a little cross check here, okay? So um, anybody have any ideas how I'm going to cross check and where I'm going to cross check this shape to. And also, what will I look for? What's the shape gonna be, hopefully, in here? Am I gonna look for something rounded? Am I gonna look for something flatter or something concave, do you think? Anybody got any ideas? 
I'll open up the chat just in case. Anybody got any ideas? A couple more seconds and then we'll go. So, I'll wait to see if anyone's there. So if we're cross-checking, as we know, we go against the shape. So our sections are like this. So we're going to cross-check like this, okay? And we're going to elevate to where we're looking to go or to where we elevate there too. What I'm looking for is because we're looking for a round shape, okay? So if we go back to this, we're shorter in the front, longer into the back. So if we're shorter in the front, longer in the back, it's going to be hopefully something looking a bit like this because our elevation has been quite low and then we're getting higher and higher and higher and the hair is getting longer because we're over directing it away from where it naturally wants to fall. Okay, so let's have a look. Now's a good time to brush it when you're four or five sections in because you can see where the hair is falling and you can see where the hair is going to go. And then if you've got any mistakes or any areas that you need to sort of re-look at, you've not gone too far into the cut to have to go through that game. So if we lift that, excellent. So we can see we're shorter in that front piece and then we gradually get longer and longer as we're coming up into the shape. Okay, so quite happy with that. So we're gonna move on. Next section in the top, now we're coming about an inch away from the crown area. Now, people who know me well will know that the crown area is my biggest area of concern, um, my biggest danger zone. I don't like the crown. Um, I don't like messing around with it. I like to keep areas in there quite soft um, and then just deal with them once the hair has been blow dried if there's something that needs to be dealt with. Um, you all may be a little bit more of a confident cutter than me in that top piece. So if you feel like the need to go straight in and go that's going to save you some time. Um, I find there's nothing worse than taking too much length off your crown and then being left with something a little bit too, um, too dumpy. Okay. So as we're getting close to the crown now, I'm going to lift quite high. I want my main crown area to be straight out of the head. Okay. Because that's going to add, that's add the softness for me. If I over direct that, there's a chance that I'm going to take it too short in some areas. Okay. So the inch before lift very high now coming right up to the top of the head. And same position again with my, with my feet, same body position, really nice and comfortable, just coming round into that top shape. And again, slim that down into here. So by, as I said, by the time we're pulling it away, if we see where that, look at the strength in that outline, there's no, there's no hole running in there, which is so crucial. If I were to do my uniform layer, as we said last week, it have a big gap in there or a big transparent gap and it wouldn't look too pretty um, when the hair is dressed down straight or um, blow dried nice and smooth. It would have a little bit more of a dumpiness and, and a big hole in there. So important that we control that length and control those areas. Okay and again in this side just slim that down. Now we come to the difficult bit. Um, this is not going to seem difficult, but it's, it is quite difficult, trust me. And the reason it is, is because you've got your crown in there and you've now got the roundness of the back of the head to contend with. Okay, so head up and take a nice size section down into this little back piece. Control that with a clip and the same in this side here. Slim that down and control that side also with a clip. So now you can properly see that little circle that we're forming down the back. And that's really, really key. That keeps your balance really nicely. It helps to ensure that your balance is set both sides. Um, your sections are your, like your row map, which is why we do head sheets um, in any, any academy that you go to, or any salon that you go to, they'll have head sheets. So here I want to have everything bang straight out from the head. And then I'm going to start to step to the side a tad breaking my own rules, I know, I do apologize. But um, the reason we wanna step in is because otherwise you're gonna be putting too much weight in the back, okay? So if we're over directing this now really far forwards or just continuing with our over direction, the weight's just pushing too much into this central back box here that we're creating. So we've gotta control that now. And this is where people tend to sort of lose themselves on a shake. If you find this really difficult, by all means, take your guideline from the top and just work your uniform layer. 
like you normally do around the back, but just watch out for that back piece, okay? For the shake, it's easier to control. So I'm gonna come in from this side, I'm gonna twist her away just to show you where, where we move here. So body position is crucial, so everything's now coming up to the top, okay? So that we're leaving as much length as we can in that crown area, and that's the peak of our layers. The peak area of our layers, because we're going rounded, now that's just gonna flow down into the back piece, okay? But here, instead of standing here, her head's facing me now, it's not facing you guys. I'm gonna step one step to the right hand side, okay? And then just lift that nice and high. You'll pick up your guide, which is in there. Take that down and then step again and just start to come round here behind the ears. So by doing this, you, you keep control of your shape. It's different to being with your uniform layer where you can't see where your outline's going. We're just flowing that same weight down now into the overall outline. I don't know if you can really see that too well. But it's just adding control and adding stability in there. So just by stepping round the header slightly, you just age your line and you age your weight, um, your weight spread, which is incredibly important. So again, lean in and then step round slightly and start to bring that shape out to your overall guideline. And that's it, that's the, that's the crucial point. That's the area that is the, the biggest concern. And now all we can do is just remove these clips. And if we can see, where's the guide? Can you see the guide in there? So there's my section. And I'm just gonna take another section down, create myself a tiny little box in the back, which is gonna be my final section. Section that down. Oh, that bit was messy. <laughs> get that in. It's difficult to get a nice clean section in this little piece. And then again, all we do is step right in the side this time. And we're now over the brow of the head. So we're just now working down our layering shape with more of a uniformy layer sort of um, technique, but still creating that high elevation to the hair. And again, twist back down to this side. I'm going to stand in the back here just so you guys can see and see where my elevation's going. We're right over the brow of the head now. So whereas our crown area here, we're taking our guide from up there, but our elevation is now lowering again because we can now come and give a little bit less of our elevation. And just in here, gets a little bit untidy through here. And then last section is going to be all vertical. Just take a nice clean section, making sure you're right on track with this. And then allow for your elevation. So lift high, connect with your crown area, and then just work that shape down and round the head. Okay? Perfect. So, what's the time? Goodness me, you've not been going too long, which is much faster. <laughs> so that's it, pretty much. Um, in terms of your technical shape, your internals, we've obviously it would have been longer if we'd have done our line first of all, but I'm not going to run you guys through a line because you've done a million of them. I know you have. But ultimately speaking, everything's just pulled forwards, everything's then elevated slightly higher each time that you run through your shape. And everything is much, much easier to control just because you've got a lot more stability with your look. So as long as when you're working with your shapes, if I pull this in quite close, as long as you're over-directing things forwards, the hair's always gonna get longer towards the back. And similarly, the other way around, if you're over-directing everything to the back, everything's gonna get longer coming forwards. So your A-line bob feel, if you're pulling things back, it's going to get longer because inevitably you're pulling this away from it where it naturally wants to fall to hit that back section, okay? So same with the round shape, pushing the hair back. If you're pulling all of this forwards with forward graduation, then your next section lifting higher, next section higher, you're pulling that away so it's traveling further, so it's wanting to sit back and aiding your approach to the blow dry, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. I'm going to, uh, is there any questions? First of all, I'm going to blow dry. Um, if there's any questions about this technique or about 
cutting hair, shape work, anything like that. If anyone's got anything they want to know, please do um, write it in the group or um, speak now. Um, I will blow dry and then um, once we're done, we'll just have a little run through and show you how it looks once it's blow dried. Um, and then just run over this again and then that's uh, quite a bit, quite a fast mess, which is quite nice. Um, guess there's no questions. So um, I'm going to blow dry. Take a 15 minute break. Okay. Um, get yourself coffee, take a cigarette. Um, just have a little rest if you want. And then um, back in 15 and then we'll just show you what this looks like. Okay. Perfect. Over that round. So if you do want to watch me blow dry, I don't really know why you would, but if you do, you can.
Sorry. <laughs> Get far away from there.
Okay, so uh, five five minutes is four minutes, five minutes, and we'll be back. All right, so uh, back in five. Five minutes already.
Good. So, uh, whilst we let that cool, uh, are there any questions at all with regard to uh, what's happening in this haircut? Who's left on it? Anybody got any questions at all? Uh, Chloe, uh, don't worry, we will, I've recorded this, so I'm going to be putting it in, um, putting it in the groups um, once it's all been done. There's not many people on the call today because there's so many people are back at work um, instead of on their training days, um, which, to be honest, is not much we can really do about. Um, we, we know this month's going to be a bit, bit busy, so um, what we're doing is just opening things up. That's why I'm doing these videos, just so that people can get some academy days on their day off or... Um, when they're, some people are doing like two days on, two days off. So um, a lot of people are in, in salons today and then they're off tomorrow, but obviously that's not their academy day. So um, everything that I'm doing, I do two videos a week. Um, I've got so many students that I look after as well. So everything that I'm doing, I'm recording and just posting online. So if anybody misses anything, that's absolutely fine. Um, but we are looking to be back open in August. Um, for everybody, so um, I believe um, salons will have will be contacted about this, um, which is important to do so. So you guys are back in, um, but we'll be back up and running in August. So students back into academies. Um, as far as I'm aware, we are waiting for confirmation. Um, I can't see why it'd be any later than that. Okay. So now this is called. Um, I've got a bit of serum again. Um, I love a bit of serum just at the end of it. Um, just to, it, it smooths down those little frayed hairs, doesn't it? I know if you guys have used it in salons or in academy, you've got them little sort of bittiness to your blow dry still, just where the dry is bouncing off you or the heat's bouncing off you back onto the hair, sort of loses control a little bit. So a little bit of serum, um, dab it off on a towel, really important because you're gonna be going in from the front. If you're going in from the back, go in from the base, just so that it doesn't get oily. It's very, very oily, this stuff. Um, you'll find some like Kerastase, they're beautiful, really good products, they don't really go too oily. But stuff that you're using um, in your salons, primarily just damp it off onto a towel so you've got a little residue. And then just drop the head back and gently run your fingers through the shape. <laughs> Again, um, it's been coloured a bit, so... Difficult to run my fingers through it without tangling, but it doesn't matter. We want to now bring the life out in the hair. So you don't ever, I don't ever like hair that's too blow dried and too, um, too set into place. I like a little bit of something that's got the movement to it and to show off the cut you've done, but a little bit sort of windswept for me is always beautiful. So don't worry about how much you run your fingers through the hair because you've blow dried it into place and let it cool down. So it's that cooling process that allows the hair then to just have that real nice looseness to it, but still doesn't go frizzy or still doesn't lose its um, stability or tact to the hair, okay? So really important that you just get in there, show off what you've done to your guest. They don't wanna, uh, they don't wanna see that you've just done something, oh, a little tiny little cut and that's it. They wanna see this big, beautiful cut and you wanna basically show off your big, beautiful cut. No point saying to them, oh, this is what we've done. There we go. How's that looking? Because she's not going to really know that you've done a shake or don't tell her it's a shake. You haven't got to go that far, but explain to her, this is what we've done. This is how, how we've created this look so that you have that real head hugging feel and the beautiful um, soft layering that, that creates into your technique. So um, yeah, really nice and soft in the front. Um, hangs forward. I'm going to do that a little bit extravagant just so you can see. The, uh, lots of noises going on over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm pretty um, so yeah, hope you like it. Um, got a lot of softness in this front piece here. Uh, if I move, uh, lots of softness coming off the face, so it really sits quite high. Still controls this whole length back here, but has a lot of bounce and a lot of texture and sustenance in it. So if we give her a, a shake up again, she just has a, a real nice sort of technique that just pushes the hair away, keeps that nice softness and a nice shape. Um, works very well on people with really long hair, this. So long, mid, mid to thick hair, um, something down here, so really beautiful getting a shape going on there and um, having some real excellent look going through. So basically all we did, 
um, was just worked with our elevation today. Um, worked with a round shape in our elevation. So we started in the front, pulled everything from the back to the front, getting gradually longer, and elevated each section higher as we went up the head into the back area, controlled our crown area, which is quite important, and then just ran that shape round into the baseline. Okay, and then you get left with something really quite, um, really quite easy, which is great. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm going to take us off record now. Um, if anybody's got any questions, please do um, jump in and um, 